Mortgage defaults is a good thing, right? I thought the same exact thing. I came across an article that is borderline disturbing. Um, I'm still trying to filter through it and filter through it in my head as to what it all means. And I think that if you have a pension or if you're in some sort of, um, you know, 401k or some other investment portals, you got to watch this. What's up, everybody? Steve here. Thank you so much for being here. Let's just jump into this article because it's interesting. So how is the PLS market in making money on delinquent loans? Okay, again, PLS is private, private label securities essentially. Goes on to say, Lakeview Loan Servicing unveiled a rare private label securities offering this past March involving a pool of mostly delinquent mortgages serviced by the company. Okay, so Lakeland is a loan servicing company, which is essentially a, an entity that collects and processes your mortgage payments. The delinquent FHA insured mortgages backing Lakeview's initial private label securities offering earlier this year all were purchased out of Ginnie Mae loan pools via the agency's so-called buyout or EBO program. In those offerings, 100% of the FHA loans are delinquent, with about a quarter of the mortgages in each deal an active foreclosure. So why is this the rare bird in the PLS world suddenly getting air under its wings, and how can you make money securitizing delinquent loans even when they're in active foreclosure? It's a really good question. To understand how these EBO PLS deals can offer an attractive return for bondholders, we need to examine the details of the recent EBO offerings. Lakeview Trust 2022 EBO2 involves a pool of 2,063 FHA back loans with unpaid ba principal balances of $405 million with all the loans deemed delinquent. In total, 99.3% of the loans in the collateral pool for the offering are 90 days or more past due and 26.5 are in active foreclosure. Oh, it gets better. So the next pool has 302, uh, 302 million unpaid balances and 100% uh, of the pool loans are delinquent, 97.6 are 90 days or more past due, and 24.8% are at inactive foreclosure. And then the other fund is a pool of 2,192 FHA guaranteed mortgages, 423 million in unpaid principal, and 96.6 uh, of mortgages were 90 days or more past due, 16.3% are in active foreclosure. Once a loan is 90 day past due, however, under Jenny May EBO program, the servicer can buy the loan out of Jenny May loan pool, which means it can stop advancing principal and interest payments each month after the mortgages are acquired by a servicer becomes current for six sec consecutive months, often through modifications, they are eligible to be resecuritized through Jenny May and repooled with other loan collateral. Okay, that's where it gets really scary. So it can be repooled with other loan collateral. So back, if you've never seen the movie The Big Short, they were basically just taking dog shit with other dog shit and kind of putting it together and basically saying it's A plus paper. And now they're saying, okay, what we're going to do with these loans is we're going to take these loans, we're going to help these people modify their loans, which is good. It's good for the homeowner to get a modification, right? However, it's evident that these people have financial trouble, okay? So they're going to go ahead and, and get these um, loans modified. However, I'm going to be very curious about this. What is going to, going to be the delinquency rate? even after they modify these loans, okay? So they get the loans modified, let's say they even put them into 40 year fixed mortgages, and then they take those loans and they repool them with other loans. So are these other loans A plus paper? And now these repool loans, they're putting them with A plus paper and making it look like this is the best investment possible that somebody can invest into with mortgage backed securities. I don't know, but I feel like there's something bad about to happen with, with this. Getting the loans to reperform represents highest income generating potential for the EBO offering. 
For all three of Lakeview's EBO offerings so far this year, however, at least 75% of the loans in the pools being securitized via the PLS market are already delinquent by 90 days or more, making a high rate of redelivery to Ginny pools an unlikely outcome. All three Lake. Views EBO private label offerings include an interest rate reserve account with starting balance ranges 9.8 million to 13 million to cover potential bond interest shortfalls. So they're basically saying that they have to keep roughly around 10 million bucks in reserves, basically just to pay the interest on the unpaid balances of, and get this, we'll go back up, of. 405 million, 302 million, and 423 million. So they got to keep 10 million in reserves for this for each fund. I mean, the the numbers are not adding up too much here. Um, and I think that the the people putting these together when they sell these bonds off or whatever they do with them, there's going to be a big big sale on this, and a lot of people are going to get rich. And the average investor pension fund or whatever buying into this crap are going to be the ones stuck holding it. EBO strategies are expected to become more prevalent as a function of the size of the overall Jenny May market with Jenny May outstanding mortgage-backed securities at approximately 2.1 trillion in 2021 versus approximately 400 billion in 20 or 2007. That is a lot a lot of money. Um, and if we compare that prior to the last crash, that's very significant. So time's going to tell as to what really happens here. Lakeview ranked as the fifth largest overall services, servicer of agency-backed loans, controlling 4.6 of the combined services book of building of Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Jenny Mae loans. It's servicing portfolio for all agency loans based on unpaid unpaid principal balance stood at 374 billion i think we are not told the true story and this article in itself from housing wire i'm going to drop it in the description below is showing the the true significance of really how big the delinquency market is and they're they're seeing a an opportunity here, but I think this opportunity is going to hurt a lot of other people. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Read this article, please, and let me know what you guys think. It's it's very hard to digest, but I think it's going to be bad. I think it's going to be really bad. Let me know your thoughts below, and I appreciate you guys being here. And I'll see you guys on the next video. See ya.